Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here at the colloquium of the Mathematical Mexican Mathematical Society. Uh, it is a truly honor to introduce Professor Helge Holden. He is the General Secretary of the International Mathematical Society, the most important mathematical organization in the world. It is best known for the organization that every four years organizes the International Congress where the field medals are given. However, I want to emphasize the importance of the day-to-day -day of the IMU as an organization that promotes collaboration between all the members to the development of mathematics. I am very happy that Mexico is part of this effort. Professor Helge Holden works in differential equations and mathematical physics. He has more than 150 papers with more than 10,000 citations. He belongs to the Royal Norwegian Society of Science and the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. He's also the chair of the board of the Apple Prize. 
As I said before, it is a truly honor to have him here with us now with the lecture, Mathematical Modeling of the Traffic Flow. Please, Helge. Thank you very much, uh, Renato. Um, thank you very much for the kind invitation and also the introduction. I'm very happy to be here and to give a talk. Um, I could talk about the IMU, um, but I, I'd rather give a, a general mathematical talk. And then if there are questions concerning the IMU, I would be more than happy to answer them. Um, so let me try to share my screen. Um, let's see. Um, so let's see that. Um, so I, I, I have two, two seconds. I need to find my, uh, it's here. Um, so let's see. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. So I would like to talk about uh, the modeling of traffic, which is truly a universal problem um, that we all face in our everyday life. And what I will talk about is some joint work with a collaborator of mine, uh, Nils Henrik Risbro of the University of Oslo. And I will not assume any prior knowledge of, of mathematical modeling of traffic. So I, I, will, I will talk about two different kinds of models. One that goes under the name of traffic hydrodynamics and another one that is called follow the leader models. And I will then study what is called the continuum limit of follow the leader models. And I will show that these, these two models, the traffic hydrodynamics and follow the leader models are connected. And then I will also study a recent model of multi-lane traffic. And being mathematicians, we are not afraid of going to, to infinitely many lanes. And I, I will give a model of that uh, at the end. Um, so the two, two uh, types of, of traffic models are, as I said, follow the leader models, where we track individual vehicles. And uh, the other situation where you can't identify individual uh, vehicles, but you, you model traffic by a density. So you, you can't see individual uh, vehicles, but, but there is a density. So that's suitable for heavy traffic. So this would be a picture modeling um, uh, follow the leader model. You can see individual vehicles and you, you want to track them. This one is more suitable for, for heavy traffic. I don't know if there is any dynamics in this picture at all, but it's certainly heavy traffic. And let me go into this light till with them Richards model, which is the, the dense traffic model. So you make a key assumption, namely that traffic is going in one direction, is one lane, and is heavy traffic. And so you represent the vehicles by a density. And then you make this assumption, which looks very innocent, but it's, it's not as innocent as it looks. You namely that you assume that the velocity just depends on the density. Heavy traffic, velocity goes down. Light traffic, velocity goes up. Um, and this is supported uh, by, by uh, observations, but uh, it's not a, a, you know, it's not a universal uh, relationship, but this is, makes mathematics so much easier. So we assume that for this uh, road with, with traffic in one direction, there are no exits or entries. So the number of vehicles is conserved. Then you get this equation where subscript denote the, the derivation, so derivation with respect to time plus derivation with respect to x, the parameter going along the road. Uh, and this is what is called traffic hydrodynamics because the equation is identical to mass conservation in a continuum mechanical system. So it's the first equation in the Euler equation, say, or if you ignore viscosity, the first equation in the Navier-Stokes equation. So this is a traditional equation in continuum mechanics. And this is mathematically an example of a first order hyperbolic conservation law. And there is ample theory for that. Now, the question is what about the velocity? This is something where you need some input. And um, 
the simplest one is a linear co connection between uh, velocity and density. And I've scaled things so that the highest density is one and the lowest density is zero. So if the, the density is very low, velocity is approaching some maximum value, which in, in many countries is equal to the speed limit. Not in all though, but in many countries it is. And if, if uh, density is very high, close to one, uh, traffic comes to a halt and we have bumper to bumper and nothing happens. You can play with various powers. You can also do this logarithm, which looks bad for when density is very low, but it's multiplied by rho and then we know that it has a finite limit when rho goes to zero. So these are models that have been uh, studied in the literature and they, there is some experimental support for them. So let me, uh, in case there are people in the audience who are not uh, familiar with hyperbolic conservation laws, uh, let me just state some facts. Uh, so solutions of the Cauchy problem will develop singularities in finite time, even if you start with initial data, smooth initial data. So this means that you have to go into the theory of weak solution, distribution of solutions, and there are two subclasses of solutions, shock waves and what is called rarefaction waves. And we will see both of them. And this means that you need to study the distribution of solutions, and this means that you may lose uniqueness. And this means that at some point you have to introduce um, some what is called an entropy condition to, to obtain uniqueness. And that is the famous Khrushchev theory, which is a very elegant theory. Um, and then let's see. And then uh, if you go to a system of equations, that's much harder. So we have one equation, but if you have two equations, two different densities, it's much harder. And if you go to many space dimension and how many equations, then you are basically on your own. That, then there is not much mathematical theory. So for instance, the Euler equations in multi dimensions is still widely open. So let's, a very natural question is, is uh, to look at what happens on a network. So let's look at that. So this was, uh, was the picture that we had in mind when we, we started studying this. It's of course a familiar map over Manhattan. So this was our small Manhattan project where we traffic is in one direction and at each intersection, but you can go uh, straight or left or right. And maybe you want to go uptown, but the traffic is heavy. So you change going east-west before you, you go uh, north as, as was your attention. So we try to, to do for each road, we use the LWR model as I, I just described, and then we connect them at uh, the junctions. So uh, with my good collaborator, uh, we introduced the model of this back in 95. It didn't really catch on for, for some time, but now there is, uh, it has become a very um, active area of research. Many people are, are working on it. Uh, and that these two books devoted to it, uh, but the theory is developing uh, rapidly. So, so why is that? What, what is the problem? Well, there is one big problem, and that is why people can continue to work on it. What happens at intersections? So you come on this road and you can go up or you can go down. If you've been a Newtonian part particle, you would follow the Newton's law, but we are human, so we follow human law. And which means that uh, <clears throat> we have a intention of going somewhere, which means that maybe we want to go down and then we go down. But if traffic is very heavy going down, we may go up with the intention of later on going down. So, but this makes it a very interesting topic for modeling. So many people can model the human behavior at these intersections. You can also build traffic circle, roundabouts, uh, traffic light, different quality of roads. So, so this is an endless game to play and that's why people are interested in it. I will not talk about that here. So what I will talk about uh, is another problem. So let's go to follow the leader models. So here the vehicles are modeled in individually. And the dynamics is simply determined by the distance to the vehicle ahead of you. So the picture is like this. Little l is the length of a vehicle and z sub 
i minus a half is the location of vehicle number i. The, the minus one half looks very strange and it will disappear shortly. So this is what we do. And here is the dynamics. So the velocity of vehicle number i is based on a function, a given function, velocity function, that has an input, the distance to the vehicle ahead of you. So if you're close to the vehicle ahead of you, you slow down. If the distance is, is bigger, you increase your velocity. And everything is scaled with, um, with the length of the vehicle. And this model is very simple. It is the simplest model. And it has this uh, nice feature that you can't collide in this model. Collisions are not possible. That's a mathematical fact. It's not an uh, observed fact, but it's it's uh, a fact that um, comes from this model. Um, so uh, now introduce a slightly different and more convenient notation. Instead of having the location of each <coughs> vehicle, I do the distance between two adjacent vehicles, and then the plus minus one half disappears. So y sub i is the distance between two vehicles. The dynamics that we had on the previous slide is given by this. If we introduce a y's, we get this. So y i dot is the time derivative of y i, and the right hand side is just the forward difference like this. <clears throat> so it takes the difference between two adjacent uh, values uh, along the axis and they scale it by the L. And this is indeed the dynamics. So now by changing it into these variables, it looks quite different and we will take advantage of that. And this is what uh, I was alluding to when I, I mentioned in the, on the first slide that I want to consider the continuum limit. I want to make each vehicle as short as uh, going to zero, but I want to, to scale the number of vehicles so that it goes to infinity. I want to study the limit in this equation. This is a toy model of, or a toy example in the general theory of the big question in mathematical physics, namely to go from particle to continuum models. Um, I mean, this is a very fundamental problem in mathematical physics. This is, is on a completely different level. This is much easier. Um, on the other hand, this can be solved. <clears throat> so uh, this is a problem that has been studied by many. And, and this is an incomplete list of people who have studied this. So our take on this is, um, two papers that we wrote a couple of years back, where we can we have a much shorter proof where we take advantage of that we know so much more about the limit <coughs> than, uh, than have been used in previous uh, proofs. So we have a, a very short proof of, of this. And I will present, a, not the proof, but the, the setup and why, why the proof is short. Uh, so, um, <coughs> and this will come now. So recall that that was the, the model. This is the follow the leader model in our variables, where d plus is a forward differencing and vi is v evaluated at yi. So now I introduce the density. I want to go to the LWR model. I want to go to a density and density is inverse distance between vehicles. So rho i is the inverse of yi. And you see, then it becomes important that vehicles do not collide because that would make yi zero and that would not be good for my, my variable. Then I extend these pointwise functions to the full line. So I use the pointwise values. I make it piecewise constant. So the chi is a characteristic function of, of the given interval. So this is a piecewise constant function. And then comes uh, the velocity is also made piecewise constant in the same way. So now I have two functions that are defined on the whole line and on all of T, and I can study the limit of this function when N, the number of vehicles goes to infinity and the length of each vehicle L goes to zero. And that is a familiar problem uh, uh, in, 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 many, uh, in many PD questions. Okay, so let's uh, look at the continuum limit. So here's where I'm skipping all the details. So I, 
one can prove, and we have proven, and uh, you can find the proof in, in the papers, that the bounded variation, so the total variation of this approximate function are bounded by the initial value of the same quantity. So the, the total variation does not increase as time develops. The same with the velocity. The, the total variation of the velocity will not increase in time. That's a very important property and it has this property. Then one can show, and this is a, a, a more or less standard approach in hyperbolic conservation laws. You have a function defined on all space and time that satisfy these two properties. If you assume that the initial data have bounded total variation and this interval, you have some assumptions on the velocity, some regularity assumptions. Then one can show that the density will converge in the, in the space given, so it's continuous function in time in the L1 norm in space. And it will satisfy this hyperbolic conservation law, which has exactly the LWR form where the, the flux function called F is a, is a, a product of the density with the velocity function, where the velocity comes with one overall, but that's just a different uh, way of measuring the velocity. And this will be a weak solution and it will satisfy the Krushko entropy uh, condition. Um, so it is a bona fide solution of the, of the LWR model. And we will be using more or less standard approach in, in the theory of conservation laws. So, but we can take advantage of the fact that there are many methods developed for convergence of numerical methods for the uh, for hyperbolic conservation laws to take it one step further. And I will do that now. So this was the equation where Z is the difference between, um, uh, Z is, is the location of, of vehicle number I, and this was the dynamics. Now we discretize in time. The equation on top of the slide is continuous in time, discrete in space. Now we discretize in time as well. <clears throat> so we introduce a small time parameter delta t, and we discretize in time. And now we use what is called uh, a forward Euler's approximation of uh, the ODE on, on top of the screen. And we get uh, the, the, the quantity or the equation that you see on, here on the slide. I introduce as before the difference between uh, the two locations. So the difference between uh, in distance between two vehicles. And then I can write the system as this. I just subtract the two expressions above on different spatial locations. And then I get this system where, as you would expect, y super n sub i is the approximate value of y at the location i along the, the space direction and tn along the time direction. And similar with bn sub i. Lambda is the ratio between delta t and what corresponds to delta x, namely the length of each vehicle. But this one can recognize as nothing but a monotone numerical scheme for a hyperbolic conservation law. This is a monotone scheme, and it, there is a lot of literature on the convergence of these schemes. So we can appeal to that instead of developing the theory ourselves. And there are two, two critical theorems that uh, come to our uh, rescue here. So first we extended the y su uh, super n sub i to a function defined in all space and time by making it p linear interpolation. We need piecewise constant in the x direction and, and linear interpolation in the y direction. Um, and then we apply a classical result going back to the 80s, I think, by Crandall and Vajda for monotone schemes. And this, res this result simply says that monotone schemes converge. So indeed, Y sub L will converge to a Y in this space.
where why we'll satisfy this equation. It is a hyperbolic conservation law, but it's not LWR model. So we are sort of, we, we feel we are close. We have taken the continuum limit. However, we ended up with the wrong equation. Not too good, but um, there is a way around this as well. Because what is the difference now? We are in the Y variable, while we were in the rho variable in the LW model. So we have to get from Y to rho. That's a nonlinear transformation that is in general not allowed in these nonlinear PDs. You will not maintain a solution when you, you make this nonlinear transformation. It so happens that nature is, is kind to us here. These variables um, that I have here are, are Lagrangian variables. We track each, each particle, each vehicle. The other one is the Eulerian variable the, where we are looking at densities instead. And there is a classical result due to Wagner, which says that for in, in the context of these nonlinear PDs, a solution of in Lagrangian variables can transform into a weak solution in, in uh, Eulerian variables and keeping the entropy condition. So uniqueness is preserved. So this nonlinear transformation is allowed and it gives the right result. So we get that. Uh, the row uh, will satisfy this equation, which is the LWR model. But now we can we could rely on two classical theorems from from the theory of hyperbolic conservation laws, uh, the the Crandall Maida and the Wagner result. So now I I stay within the framework of, of traffic modeling, but I go to a multi-lane uh, model. So this is based on a paper that was published uh, uh, two years ago in, in um, and, and the, the picture you, and it has been followed up by other people afterwards. So there are more papers on, on these multi-lane models. So this is a picture you should have in, in mind. Heavy traffic, several lanes, and you want to model this. And of course the, 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 the challenge is how to model the change of lanes. So if we introduce some notation, rho sub i and v sub i is uh, the density and velocity in lane i. And if we do the LWR model, um, uh, we, we get the left-hand side is, is LWR for each lane. On the right-hand side, there is a source slash sink term that models the, the change of traffic from one between the two lanes. And of course, the, the heart of the matter is how to model this source slash sink term. So vehicles that go from lane one to two will be also, there will be vehicles leaving lane one will enter lane two and vice versa. So the, no vehicles are lost here. This is an example of what is called the weakly coupled system of conservation laws because the coupling between the two equations only takes place in the source term without any derivatives. So there is theory for this. Um, so of course, as I said, the key is to model the, the source here. So uh, here is, uh, we'll have a, a brief simulation and, and here's the model. So this next one is, is rather busy. Okay, so let's look at the right hand side. So, and let's look at the top equation. So, first of all, uh, the, the number of vehicles going from lane one to lane two is proportional to the difference in velocity. The bigger the difference in velocities are, uh, the more cars change lane to the fast uh, lane. That is what we, that's what we are used to. And uh, the bold one is the characteristic function. So we only change lane if the new lane has, goes faster than, than the lane you're in. That's why the characteristic function is like this. And the rate at which you change uh, lane is proportional, as I said, to the difference in velocity and the density of the lane that you're leaving. If there's heavy traffic in the lane that where you're in, you, you want to leave it. You want to, to go to a lane with less traffic and where you can go substantially faster. 
Okay, so that is uh, what we have modeled here. And now we make lane one. I mean, we, we make a linear uh, relationship between density and, and velocity. And we make lane two slightly faster. So the maximum velocity is 2.5 in the fast lane and 1.5 in the slow lane. And we start with the same distribution of, of vehicles in the two lanes. And we expect that because lane two is faster, vehicles will move into lane two, but not all of them, because then suddenly it goes slower. So let's run the, the slide the video here. So uh, the blue line is lane one, and we see that eventually the density drops. So there, are, there will be more vehicles in the fast lane, and the difference will be, um, well, as you can see on the slide, there is always a shock. Shock is a vertical part of the solution in both lanes. And that corresponds to a rapid transition in densities. And it also turns out, at least in all the experiments we've done, that the, the shock for the fast lane is to the left of the shock in, in the slow lane. We're not exactly sure why it is, but it seems to be a, a, fact, a feature of this solution or, or this model. So there is a theorem uh, coming with this. So if we assume that the velocities are Lipschitz where the initial density is, is L1 slash L infinity, then this, this model has a unique weak entropy solution uh, with n lanes here, uh, any number of lanes, and we get the following stability. So if we have two solutions, rho i and rho bar i, and we take the difference in L1 norm for each time, and we sum it for all lanes, this is bounded by the same quantity computed at t equal to zero. This, if if, if, uh, if anyone is, is familiar with the theory of, of weakly coupled conservation laws, it is not too surprising, but from the standard theory, you get an exponential factor on the right-hand side, e to some constant times t. So it's not bounded by the initial, but it, it grows linearly or, or exponentially with it. Here, because of the special feature of this model, we can do better. It is actually bounded by the initial L1 norm. We can also show that the, the BV, the, the boundary variation, so the total variation, total, uh, total, total variation of all lanes is bounded by the same quantity equal to zero, which is, is nice. It doesn't come for free. It requires some computations and estimates. We also have a sort of a sanity check for the model, namely that if the initial density is between zero and one, we have to scale things so, so that zero is the lowest density and one is the highest density. Also, the solution should preserve the same um, uh, estimates, right? You don't want suddenly to have more cars than the capacity of the road or have negative, uh, negative density. It wouldn't look good. Um, and indeed, this model has this feature that uh, densities never become negative and never exceed one. So here is uh, a, a road that we don't have in Norway. You may have it in Mexico with eight lanes in, in one direction. Um, and we, we start with the same distribution of equals. And again, we will see a transition to the faster lane. The, the, the lanes will uh, Will go faster with the lane number. So the equation is the same. And for any, any road now or any lane now, we have the difference between vehicles coming in from the lane to the right and vehicles coming in from the lane to the left. So it becomes more complicated. And, uh, but the function is the same. And at the very left and the very right, you can't exit the road. So let's run the movie. It goes like this. There is a there is a there is a shock forming to the very left, and uh, as I said, with the also with the two lane model, uh, and the the shock is formed to the to the left of of the slow lanes, but the, the shock is not as pronounced as it is in the two lane model. So 
we also were tempted to study the, the infinitely many lanes situation. Um, and uh, so I, I, I'm not sure this corresponds to any traffic that I've seen before with infinitely many lanes, but mathematically it's very tempting to let n the number of lanes go to infinity and see what, what is the limit. Because now you have to, to play with the constant, the coupling constant between different lanes. That probably should go to zero if the number of lanes goes to, to infinity. So, uh, or, but the, the, it's not so easy to say. So we scale the lanes here with the parameter delta y. Uh, and we, we have to assume that the, the constant in, indeed goes to infinity uh, with, um, with the number of uh, lanes dropping to zero uh, or the distance between lanes dropping to zero. Um, so we assume, and, and of course this is an assumption that this, um, we'd like to get rid of, but it, it wasn't that easy, so we ended up uh, doing this, uh, this uh, uh, assumption, namely that there is one university velocity function for all lanes, um, but, uh, but there is a different speed limit in each of the lanes. So uh, there is a speed limit uh, for each lane, and this may be an increasing function uh, with the lane number, but it can be more or less uh, anything. But so, so this means in some sense that each lane has the same quality. If you, if you think that uh, the quality of the, of the uh, lane is, is uh, encoded in the velocity. So then you have a different uh, uh, speed limit in each of the lanes. So you assume that uh, that you have a smooth uh, uh, speed limit function, and it has to come to some sort of a, a maximum or, or minimum for the for the function at the very left and the very right lane, because you you don't want vehicles to leave the the, the road even if they're infinitely many lanes. At the very left and the very right, they they should not be. Then we have a flux function that is uh, rho times V of rho. And then one can show that if delta Y goes to zero, so the dis distance between uh, lanes uh, drops to zero, we get this model. Uh, and we hadn't seen this before uh, when, when we looked at this. So, the boundary condition, the middle line in these three lines, simply says that vehicle, vehicles cannot uh, leave um, uh, leave the very left and the very right of, of the of the of the road. Uh, the bottom one is initial data, and the first one is is a slightly different conservation laws from what we have seen before. It has the translation in the x direction that looks quite familiar with what we have seen before uh, but then it has to term in the y direction because there is certain drift in the y direction and, and this should depend on on the change in the speed limit right and that's encoded k prime times the same function that carries you in the in the x direction so this is what you get as the last term on the left hand side then there is a term that is a diffusive term on, um, on the right hand side. It's not a homogeneous diffusion and uh, it's, uh, it, it is not so easy to, to deal with this because uh, if you get zero on the, on the right hand side, you get zero diffusion uh, and then it loses its uh, diffusive behavior and you get uh, competition between the hyperbolic nature of the equation and the parabolic uh, property of this equation. So we, we, we looked around for, uh, for literature on this and we couldn't. Um, so um, 
What we did was that we, we published with an Italian collaborator um, a paper on uh, that was published this year on, on a simplified equation. So we threw away the, the terms on the left hand side, not all of them, but uh, the two, two the derivative terms on, on the left hand side. The first one would be, I think, or we think would be easy to, to get into the equation. Uh, but we threw out both of them, so we got a, a, a singular diffusion equation. Uh, and the second line corresponds to, to a Neumann boundary condition. So we did a singular diffusion uh, with Neumann boundary conditions. And even if we simplified the equation quite considerably, uh, we didn't find uh, any literature on it. And we had to struggle a lot with, uh, with many of the estimates. So it, it wasn't that easy as, as we had hoped for. Um, we also did uh, a simulation of uh, of the model with all terms, um, the, the model on the previous slide. So here, again, uh, the red colors uh, in the high density, and um, blue low density. There is uh, the same density for all lanes, but now there is a continuum of lanes uh, going upwards on the on the picture. And we see how what happens. And the initial data is set up in a way that should sort of correspond to the eight lane example I had first. So let's see what happens. So there should be a transition of, of vehicles going up because they should go to the faster lanes. So there is more blue on the on the bottom and less blue on the top. And there is this shock that we saw on the left, uh, a big transition between the blue and the red. Uh, but as time evolves, this sort of is being blurred, as we saw also in the eight lane example, that uh, that the shocks were not as pronounced as, as they were in the two lane example. So we see that, um, we see that the solution goes like this: more vehicles go into the, the faster lanes in in the in the language of traffic, uh, even if you have hard to, to put the vehicles on with infinitely many lanes. You see there is this transition into faster lanes. Okay, so um, I hope I have convinced you that uh, traffic modeling can be a source uh, for mathematical problems. Um, uh, it can also be a source of mathematical problems, but here I, I think it's a source for mathematical problems is what I want to stress. Uh, and you can see this is a typical picture from a modern city. You have many different agents. You have small cars, big cars, you have pedestrians, you have people on bikes, you have people on motorbikes, you have buses, uh, heavy trucks, you have everything. You have intersections, multiple lanes, traffic in many directions. And it's up to us as mathematicians to model this in any way we find it appropriate. This could be a good model for multi-lane traffic with the complication that it is a toll, toll station here. We have to pay, uh, we have to stop traffic. So it enters uh, some complications entering in the model that I studied. But here's certainly multi-lane or one directional traffic. But modern traffic is more like this. Uh, and it's not clear to me that the models that I have discussed today anywhere close to, to, to describing this traffic. This one uh, is what is called the traffic circle from hell um, on the internet. It's, uh, and this probably is on a completely different level when it comes to modeling. So there is a lot of math modeling of traffic flow out there in, in the math literature. And I want to, to uh, coming to an end, I, I want to add some, some words of caution here. Um, because what I've done, at least to me, was interesting mathematics, but the relevance to traffic is something where one should be a little bit skeptical. So, because modern modern traffic technology works with different things. Every vehicle has a GPS uh, that allows for real-time exchange of traffic data. If you want or you don't want, this data is transmitted from your phone or GPS 
from all drivers and the traffic authorities. So in, in many modern cities, this is monitored on screen somewhere in, uh, in real time. And the traffic authorities can then regulate traffic parameters in real time. They can uh, reduce or increase speed limits. They can introduce, uh, they can close roads, open roads, introduce uh, uh, deviations where you have to follow a different route, all sorts of things, and they can do this in real time. And none of this is, is part of the models that I've described and that you can find in literature. So what I, I've studied here is very idealized. So uh, I think this is, this is uh, something to, to have in mind when you are yeah, studying this. To be relevant for applications, we probably need a different kind of models. Uh, and the models I've described uh, at least gives me a lot of pleasure. But uh, if you want to study the real problems of modern traffic, you may start with the modeling of equations. And, uh, and that, that's great fun. And you will come up with new equations that nobody has seen before. Uh, and this means that you will be the first to study this equation. And that, I think, by itself is, is a great challenge. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and I, I am more than happy to answer, answer any questions. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Helga, for this wonderful and very interesting talk. Um, there are a couple of questions in the in the audience. So the first one is from Octavio Arismendi. Does it make sense to model two populations going to different places in the traffic by considering two fluids? Uh, I think he's thinking in the intersections. Yeah, this this is interesting. I don't think people have studied this in in the sense of networks to have two different. Uh, Two different kind of vehicles. It is a very, it is a very interesting problem. Uh, mostly people are, are are studying one type of vehicles and how do people behave at the intersection. It would be nice to introduce say two kind of vehicles, heavy track, light uh, cars, uh, you know something. That that's very. It's a very good question. Wide open, I think. Yes, and then there is a second question from Joaquin Delgado. Uh, how these first order methods compare with second order models? Why do not include the diffusion in the X direction? Yeah, uh, yet another very good question. So why it was not introduced? Uh, it was because it is uh, simply without. It's not a good uh, explanation, but this was because we did it uh, as a first with, with this kind of approach. We wanted to, to keep it simple, but people have started to introduce higher order models uh, with the, within the same framework. So there, there are a few papers that go beyond this first order theory. So this, but this I think is an inter interesting and attractive area of research to build more advanced models into the follow the leader models and then take the limit. Very good question. Thank you. Uh, I will I will put the, the Zoom meeting for uh, anyone who wants to 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 ask you directly some. There are two new questions, uh, Renato. Do you want me to read them? Okay, I will read them because <laughs> Renato is trying to do something else. Yeah, so, sorry. I, 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 my multitasking, my multitasking job is not very good. <laughs> No, okay. So Carlos Hergenson um, says, how much would these models need to be modified to consider different driver behaviors, for example, aggressive, defensive, etc.? 
Yeah, this is this is uh, another good question, and, and we we I mean I have tried with with a couple of collaborators to try to build into this model different velocity functions. Right, uh, I'm an aggressive right uh, driver. I have a different velocity function than a more careful driver, and. Uh, and this is interesting, uh, but it, it's not clear. First of all, you have to to decide how many drivers are aggressive, how many are not so aggressive, how do they distribute uh, on the road, and uh, and this is not clear. So if you if you make a few of them, they may scale away in the limit. If you make many of them, they may give a different limit. This 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 question are very interesting. So, um, and you could also, uh, and that's yet another um, kind of problems, is you can introduce randomness. So your aggressive drivers are present with a probability of 10% or 50%, depending on the country and where you are, uh, you know, the temperature around you and what kind of vehicle you have. So you can give that with a certain percentage. And then you can introduce stochastic models and that I've not touched upon. Uh, so, I mean, it's wide open. New ideas, uh, new approaches, uh, possibly new mathematics. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Marcus is ask, says, okay, while idealized, do you consider to include control into your model? That is kind of model or modeling traffic lights, traffic parameters, etc. Yeah, this, this is, I mean, all the questions today are, are really to the point. Uh, there is some literature on, on control theory, trying to optimize, say, traffic light. And uh, so, so there is a literature on that. But as we all know, I mean, uh, mathematical optimization is, is not an easy field in itself. Uh, so it's, uh, so again, there is room for, for clever modeling. And uh, whether you want to do it on a follow the leader model or an LWR model, um, and how to optimize. But this is certainly a problem, which is exactly the question traffic engineers ask themselves every day, how to optimize traffic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helio. Um, so the, the, the Zoom session is open for everybody that wants to come in and make some questions and we will, the, I, I put the, the Zoom coordinates in the chat and we will close this broadcasting in a few moments. But I think that before Helge has to announce something about uh, ICM or something like that, no? Before yes. closing the broadcast. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. I. I I forgot about that. Sorry. I, I can I can do that now. Yes, please. Yes, please. So it's very brief. Not much that uh, except the logo here. It's the ICM will take place in Saint Petersburg, July six to July fourteen next year, and the web page is is at the bottom of the screen. Um, but what I would like to stress is that there are two programs for for support for participation. There is uh, the Chebyshev grants, uh, for which, uh, which is going to support younger researchers from, uh, or researchers from developing countries. And there are Kovalevskaya grants uh, for, uh, for uh, um, mathematicians from developed countries that need partial support. And it be, because these programs are a little bit technical, they have all sorts of constraints of this and that type. I just want to encourage every one of you to go to the ICM webpage, look at the, the funding opportunities, opportunities that are given, and look if you can find something that fits uh, you. I, I think the Russian organizers have done a great effort to have programs that uh, support programs, grant programs that can help mathematicians all over the world to participate. Also for the ICM, for the first time, uh, there will be a visa free entry. So for all countries, normally, I mean, for, for many people and probably for Mexico as well, you, you will need a visa to, to enter uh, Russia. 
not so for this uh, Congress. And it also includes accompanying persons and it, it is extended to a period before the Congress and after the Congress. So if you want to travel around in Russia, either professionally or as a tourist, you can enter together with the accompanying persons, Russia, by just showing that you are registered for the ICM. And this is, this is a, a, a great, um, this is a, a, it's a great thing that uh, Russia has done that is hard for, for most countries to do. Uh, and they have tried it out with the Winter Olympics and the World Cup in, in football or soccer. And they have tried it out in the World Championship in ice hockey. So they, they have experience with this kind of visa free entry. Um, and St. Petersburg has, uh, is, of course, uh, a very interesting city. Uh, I mean, uh, apart from the mathematics, that is even more interesting in, in uh, uh, during the ICM. So I, I really hope to see as many of you as possible in St. Petersburg. I think, I mean, the, I, I talk with the Russian organizers every, almost every day, uh, and they're putting a lot of effort into making a great program. Um, so I, I, as I said, I, I hope to see um, as many as possible of you uh, in St. Petersburg next year. Thank you very much. I, I, I surely hope to be there. And I hope that a lot of people can, can go. And I will just repeat what you said. Go to the web page. There are fundings. Look for the fundings and, and try to be there. Yeah. Um, I, so so that's, that's it. Heidi, can you turn off the, the broadcasting, please? Yes, I will, I will do that, yes. Heidi, uh, are we, Heidi, are we still in the YouTube? No. Okay, so. Well, anyway, thank you very much, Helga. It was very interesting. I have I have a couple of experience with this. It is not my mathematical subject, but it is kind of a very it it, it was kind of an, my activist project sometime. Uh, uh -huh. so I live in a very small city. Yes. So uh, and and all it is it is. I, I don't know, probably seven or seven or ten roads, main roads, main yes. streets. Yes. And, and all of them are one lane, one direction, uh -huh. and one lane or something, except the, the main one. And then at, at some point, they decided to make, instead of one lane, two lanes in yes. the cost of cutting out a park. Uh -oh. Take it, and so and and then, but anyway, there was a bridge where they couldn't do nothing, and so they would have something like two lanes, one lane for the bridge, and then two lanes. Yes. And then, and then the second two lanes will be something because of the park. No, and then I said, well, that's completely stupid. Yes. It won't work. It won't work if you have this, this bridge that you cannot make two lanes, it will be useful, completely useful. Uh, I mean, completely stupid to, to, to take uh, down the park. Yeah. And so I tried to do some modeling but I was never very good. I, I mean, because I, you have this 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 bifurcation, no? The, the bifurcation yeah. of of from two to one, and then from one to two, and what's going on, and and yeah. and, and 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 you have this lack of uniqueness, and I, I never understood very well what was going on in from the mathematical point of view. But then, many years after, I I, I came out instead of, of thinking on the partial differential equation, in this very 
discrete setting, setting no? I mean, you yeah. just put the cars and, and then it's very easy to model what's going on when one car has two options, no? So, if, I mean, you have this, this bifurcation that comes out yeah. and that's very easy to model and I mean, very intuitive. No, you just go whatever you do. Yeah. But then the, the other one is very difficult. No, when you have two roads that, that merge into one, that's kind of a, how do you do it? And you can try different things of what's going on there. And 